Greetings! This is SDCPS, and this video is about pollinating Pinguicula. I will show you how to cut open the flower, which is the easiest method to expose the sexual organs of the flower, and then I will show you exactly how to pollinate and cross-pollinate Pinguicula. First of all, this is Pinguicula carulia right here. Not quite sure if that's how you pronounce it. You can po self pollinate most of the Pinguicula species, probably. Oh, 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 oh. But that's not advisable because, uh, especially some like Pinguicula igornathana, or however you pronounce that, it's not a plant I own, so. I'm not going to pay much attention to its requirements, but I've heard that that plant is an annual and it must be cross-pollinated, otherwise each generation is succeedingly weaker. Um, well this plant, I guess you could say, it flowered early, but in reality the other plants just flowered late. So, it, I had to or self-pollinate and you can see the seeds there now I really should collect that seed pod before it all blows away you can see the seeds starting to get out like I said self pollinating isn't ideal but sometimes it will work and I can even just pinch this off like so even though it's better to use a scissors or some such And Pinguicula seed, it's usually best to let it, the flower dry first, but as you can see, seeds are already falling out there. So I will go ahead and let that finish drying, and then it will come out nice and easily. Obviously, no more flower, or <laughs> no more seed pod, not a flower anymore. So yeah, I know, seed collecting is nice and dandy, but how about pollinating? And uh, as you can see here, these Pinguicula flowers are ready to be pollinated. Again, this is Pinguicula carulia, if I'm pronouncing that right, but it seems no one actually knows how to pronounce these names 100% correctly. Now notice the difference between this flower on the left and those two flowers on the right. The flower on the left is upturned. The two flowers on the right are kind of perpendicular, or wait, perpendicular to me, parallel to the soil. What that means is the flower on the left hasn't been pollinated and it's gonna die soon if we don't do anything about it. Why waste? the opportunity for some good seed? I don't know. So let me show you how to pollinate these marvelous plants. The very first step of the pollinating process is to prepare your pollinator. Now most folks use a toothpick like so with a black tip on it. And the, the black is to see the pollen. The tip is usually created just by using a permanent marker. Sharpie, you get the idea. It's quite simple. This is step one. Okay, so I've got my toothpick. It's quite big. And I've got my flower. But how do I pollinate this flower? Do I ram the toothpick down there and hope for good results? Well, some people do it that way, and you can actually get pollen, you know, because. Supposedly, some of these are pollinated by hummingbirds. Uh, I'm not all up on Pinguicula, so don't quote me. But I think the best way to do this is to actually tear open the flower. So you want to get your pictures before you try to pollinate. So this is a destructive process. Okay, so basically what you want to do is you want to expose the sexual organs, which are right there 
And if you noticed from that seed pod, here, let me get you another one, in case you didn't notice. Oh, let's see here. The seed pod forms on the stem, indicating that the sexual organs are actually attached to the stem and not the lower part of the flower. So, to expose those, as funny as this sounds, you're going to grab the lower three petals in one hand, the top two petals in the other hand, like so, and you're going to pull, that didn't work so well, you're going to pull open the flower. Okay, now that yellow part on the tail is not the pollen. Just be aware of that. The pollen part is actually hidden. Now you can see the ovary, which is my black pointer, where the, um, right there, where the seeds develop, and you see the stigma, I think it's called, basically the pollen receptor right there. And under the stigma, you've got a little flap, right? That's the stigma's the flap. You have the pollen. So, to pollinate one flower, you rub your pollinator and get pollen. Yeah, okay, so I got a little bit. It doesn't need too much. I'm going to try to get some more. If you don't have another plant, in bloom at the same time you could actually cut these off these pollen things the anthers I guess they're called and store them in the refrigerator and hopefully the pollen will still be viable when you have another plant flowering obviously this ruins your flowers beauty but it's the simplest way to do things if you want seed you're of course probably wondering what happened to this plant well it's still there and I'm gonna do the same thing to this one I'm gonna grab firmly and well it's not always successful as you can see but usually just a modif little modification will fix there we go uh, the beauty is gone completely off this plant and it has exposed for us you know maybe I could even take the rest of that off to show you more perfectly the size uh, I could actually rip the... I'm not careful here. Okay, there we go. So that's the size of the uh, sexual organs of the flower. Not very big. It's a lot of fluff. So now, all I do is take this toothpick with the little pollen on the tip and I come down to this flower and I rub it right there I just smear that pollen all over now I go back to the other flower and get more pollen and rub it again okay I got more pollen this time now I'm gonna bend down and rub it all on the top of the flap you know pollinating pinguicula is actually much easier than Drosera or even other plants in my opinion because you can control where the pollen goes you know I've been trying to pollinate Drosophyllum and basically the stigmas are right next to the styes where the male and female parts basically touch each other so how do you cross and pollinate when you know you're almost bound to self pollinate well in Pinguicula it's a little different because they almost never self pollinate by themselves because that pollen is hidden under that little flap. So now, I'm just going to clean off the toothpick. And I'm going to get some flower from, uh, pollen from this one. Mm. Check to make sure I can see this. Oh yes, okay, good. Come on. Uh oh. Saw a little puff of pollen. Oh, you might accidentally self-pollinate a little bit kind of doing this in an awkward position to show you how it's done. But there, I got some more pollen. Now I'm going to come back to this flower. Where does it go? Where is it? Where is it? There we go. Oh, stop waggling. 
kind of windy out here. I grow all my plants outside. Well, with the small exception of a growth chamber, so it has a few propagation. Got to be careful, of course, not to like tug the flower stalk. So you need steady hands while you're doing this. And I got a, quite a bit of pollen on there, so I think that's good enough. Oh, oops. Guess I bent it back. I hope you saw that. The sister ready? Eh, not really. You take a day or two. But since these are separate plants right here, again, this is Pinguicula carulia, I could pollinate them with each other's pollen. Now, Pinguicula carulia usually flowers like that one does, you know, oops, three times, you know, it flowers a bunch. So if you don't get it the first time, I mean, there'll probably be a second one. Of course, if you want to be as efficient as possible, you're going to want to pollinate all the flowers you can. Like I said, one might flower first before the other, and you will be denied the luxury of pollinating the way you'd like. But, you can always store the pollen, and even though one flower might be wasted, quote unquote, you'll get a happy cross-pollination from the second. Or, you can even self-pollinate the flower that flowers first and store the rest of the pollen. So, I hope this dispels any myths about flowering or pollinating pinguicula because I think they're probably some of the easiest plants to pollinate if you know how to do it correctly. And I hope this video has shown you that it's not hard at all. Thanks for watching.